All right, today is Tuesday, February 27th. Here we are a little after 8.30 a.m. Eastern. I'm sorry if the audio is a little bit off today. It's not your speakers. I've been sick since the weekend and I'm still getting over it. Anyways, here I'm looking at MNQ using Ninsa Renko bars with a size of 64 and 16. And I'm trading one of my evals. And in all honesty, I've been kind of fighting with this account for a while now gotten very close to funding it a handful of times but every time I'm close to the target I end up doing something dumb I stop following my plan just to try and get that last little bit and obviously when you don't follow your plan bad things happen so be better follow your plan but like I just mentioned I'm using 64 and 16 and these are pretty big for most people but I like them because they slow down NQ quite a bit. You can still catch decent moves, but without all of the noise that comes with it. The downside is, of course, you typically get a much lower risk to reward, and it's also a little bit too slow. If you're someone that wants to be in and out of trades quickly, and you don't have time to wait around, this is not for you. But if you have a little bit of patience, or maybe you're stuck at work and can only check on your computer every once in a while, the bigger bar size might actually be a good thing. And just as a disclaimer, you should always watch your charts. It's never a good idea to be totally hands-free with any strategy as that interruptions or order delays from the broker can happen. So what is the setup? First thing you'll notice with my charts, as many of you on Discord know, I don't really use indicators. If you use them, that's fine. Do what works best for you. For me, I'm a little OCD when it comes to my charts, I like them as clean as possible. I want to be able to see where the price has been and what the price is doing right now. So for the strategy, what I'm looking for here are sort of supply and demand zones. These can be areas where the price has had big movements or some sort of support and resistance area formed. Before taking any trade, you should always look left and see what has happened before. So I'm going to pull up this chart just so we can get an idea of what I was looking at during the recording. And yes, this is a voiceover because the actual recording was almost two hours long. I'm condensing it because nobody wants to sit through two hours of me spinning on my office chair. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> so if we look at February 23rd, we can see most of the morning the price just sold off pretty heavily and then it bounced to this level it got rejected here then it came back up and again it got rejected at this same level forming this sort of M pattern so now we know there are strong sellers here so now what happens when the price gets rejected it sells off steadily and then after the weekend we open back up on the 26th price again moves up 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 until around this same area gets rejected again and then moves back up and then a little bit of a rejection here if you took this short you most people here probably would have been stopped out that's completely fine we move on but the price never actually breaks above this level so here we're still confirming there are strong sellers in this area so again the price sells off until the 27th so let's fast forward to today's video. And here I'm looking around this area. I see we had our first initial rejection. So now I'm waiting for the price to form a second pivot for me to enter short. So once I start seeing these green candles form still below this first pivot, I turn the predator onto the short side with my reversal option enabled. And this means that whenever a short reversal appears, the predator will automatically enter me into the trade. I also have it set up so it will automatically start trailing my stop when it reaches my first profit target. And yes, in case you're wondering, this template can be found in the predator setup room on the Discord. So at this point, I just have my auto short on and I actually walk away to make myself breakfast because I just woke up not too long ago. <laughs> so I'm just going to fast forward through this because the screen doesn't actually move for a little bit. And here we finally get our first red candle confirming the start of our bearish pattern. And I have one confirmation candle set, meaning I need another red candle 
before it enters a trade. And here we finally get our confirmation candle and we enter a trade. At this point, I'm still actually making breakfast and I'm only peeking at my screen just to make sure everything is going okay. And here it finally hits our first profit target. And now we can see the predator automatically starts trailing our stop. And you can see the mouse starts moving now. And this is where I actually came back to my computer. And keep in mind guys, since the moment we started looking for a trade to actually executing, it was about an hour and a little bit. My attention span doesn't let me focus for that long. I need to be doing other stuff while this is happening. So again, the bigger bar sizes, let me do that. But you don't have to do this. Do what is best for your own personality. I know many people in our own trading group, they'd rather be in and out in a few minutes, and that is completely fine. The predator can also be adjusted for that. So here as the price is moving, and for me, again, not paying attention, or maybe I was just trying to be cocky and go for a bigger target while I was recording this video. But if you watch the beginning of my Iceland video, I kind of show where I like to set my targets. I usually move my targets based on previous pivots because these have a much better chance at actually hitting a target. So you can actually lock in profits and not let the price retrace to a stop. Obviously, I realized this after the fact here and missed the opportunity. It happens. I ended up getting stopped out on the trail stop but still managed to lock in almost $600 for the eval and still before 10 a.m. So now that I hit my daily goal, I ended up closing my charts and actually went back to working on the next big update for the Predator.